Alright guys, welcome back to the Quick Kit Vintage Reloaded User Guide series. My apologies uh, that it has taken so long to uh, pick this back up and get this series out to you guys. I've been really busy, there's been a lot going on. Um, but yeah, I think moving forward what we're going to do is I'm going to make the uh, videos in the series shorter and I'm just going to make the series longer. Uh, that way I think it'll be easier for me to pump these out and uh, get you guys uh, the tutorials and the information that you need to make the most out of this kit. Um, and the last thing I'll say before I uh, jump into this pencil demonstration uh, is thank you to everybody who's uh, still been supporting me, all you new subscribers, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm hoping this summer's going to be uh, a really good summer. We're going to make a lot of videos. It's going to be fun. Um, all right, let's... Uh, Let's just jump into this thing. Um, the first thing I want to do here is I want to go into my settings. I'm going to turn off the, um, let's see, I guess, yeah. I'm going to turn off show touches um, because I think that's really going to interfere with uh, seeing how the pencils behave. I'll also just uh, open up a template file here. I'll just go with template A in the Quick Advantage folder. Now, uh, I don't really need the textured overlay for this demonstration. We're just going to be mostly working on this drawing layer here. So um, if you've followed uh, the first video, you'll have all your brushes installed and you'll be ready to go. I recently updated the kit to 3.3. That file, uh, I, it was 3.2. Uh, but now, uh, if you just want to upgrade the brush kit, I'm actually going to include that as a standalone file. That way, you don't have to download the entire kit each time you want to upgrade the brushes. I, I, that was a bit of an oversight on my part. I'm still sort of figuring this all out. So, uh, yeah, you can download the single brush file from your Gumroad library. I'll include it in the download section for you guys. Uh, it'll be there be, by the time this um, video hits YouTube. So, I'm going to go over to Pixel Persona and open up the Quick Hit Vintage Pen and Ink 3.3. So uh, basically, I'm just going to talk about the pencils, the Ultimate Limnifier pencils, and um, the uh, erasers here. Um, the Ultimate Limnifiers are basically uh, the culmination of uh, a series of experiments that I started when I first got Affinity Designer. And basically, uh, what I was looking for is, is I wanted a pencil that I could really appreciate and enjoy for myself. I think the pencils in, uh, the default pencils in Affinity Design are actually quite nice. But um, there was something that I needed. Like it wasn't, it, there was something that they weren't giving me. So I started doing all these experiments. And um, yeah, I got inspired looking at some Kirby drawings one day. And I made this set of brushes called the Prototypes. And then from there, I just kept tweaking them and coming up with ideas and making things. And, you know, um, uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, thus, the ultimate limnifier was born. Um, it has gone through so many different iterations uh, so far. And, um, yeah, we are. Uh, I think I'm going to abandon the number system at some point and maybe uh, start doing it like Iron Man or something like Mark one, Mark two. I'm not sure, but this is uh, the 8.1, and um, I've got a new texture uh, uh, in the brush, and um, I've got a few different uh, new colors. And as you can see here, I did away with the the, the multiple sets uh, because I I think you know uh, it makes sense that just having like one set of these pencils uh, it, it it cuts down on having to all the choosiness and it sort of keeps uh, everything in line with the old um, the, the theme of the kit you know the quick kits is like having everything at your fingertips really quickly so that you don't have to rifle through a hundred different brush sets to find what you're looking for um, let's uh, take these puppies for a spin and I'll show you a little bit about them now this is a rather large canvas so when I draw on the canvas immediately things are gonna look really small but that's on purpose uh, if you, this uh, canvas, uh, let's take a look at the dimensions. Oops, sorry. Cancel. Go to resize. This is a 5464 by 4096. So it's, 
it's basically the iPad times two. Yeah? And um, that's a rather large canvas. It's also at 600 DPI. So I, I've done this for a, for a couple of reasons. One is that you can do very detailed drawings at uh, a scale that is going to keep them very uh, detailed and clear, and they're not going to get all pixelated um, easily, right? And um, this is useful for a variety of reasons, but mostly it's just about maintaining your ability to produce a quality of detail. Yeah. So um, if we zoom in a little bit, let's take a look at the lines that this thing can produce. Now, without uh, any anything turned on, just choosing a brush here, you get a nice soft line from these pencils. If I press down and put a little pressure on it, I get a darker color. I can do a nice gradient there. And you'll notice that there's some jitter happening, and that is happening because I'm tilting my pencil a little bit. Um, what I want to show you in the settings, uh, what I've changed about the 8.1, is the dynamic settings down here on the scatter X and Y. What I've done is I've really sharpened the uh, the angle uh, or the, 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 the value of the tilt data and where it begins to uh, ascend. And what this does is it makes it so that you can uh, you don't start getting too much tilt until the angle of your pencil gets extreme. So I'll show you the different kinds of lines you can produce just by drawing at different tilt angles. So you've got, this is like, I'll label them too as I'm drawing them. This is 90 degrees right here. This is straight up and down on the canvas, right? Now I'm going to tilt just a little bit. We'll, we'll say this is about, um, I would say this is about 60, 70, 75, between 75 and 60 degrees. You get a little bit of jitter, but not too much. And then I'm going to go down even further to about 45. The jitter really becomes apparent there, right? I'm going to go down all the way. And actually, I'm going to use an overhanded grip. And I'm going to get the angle as low as I can. And you get this. Now, this is basically what is going on with that input curve. Basically, nothing's happening. But then right around here, right around this area here you start that jitter starts and then because it's such a short distance yeah um, it really just picks up and then once you've got an overhanded grip here you get this and what that does for you is it allows you to shade like you would with a with a real pencil uh, I'll just draw like some little object over here Uh, these, these days, I've been looking at a lot of um, Mobius. I, I guess it's not just these days. I'm, I really like Mobius. Um, yeah, this is some kind of a weird rock that might, might be a face at some point, but whatever. I, so, so, so I've got my my lines drawn here, and uh, yeah, I, I like this weird face rock thing that I have created. And now, if I just switch the pencil over like I would naturally when I'm drawing at home, and then just adopt that overhanded grip, I get this nice ability to shade. And I re I'm really proud of the texture that I've got created here. Um, it took a lot of experimentation. And uh, yeah, so the scattering effect um, is set to where you can, you can do some nice shading effects. Yeah, and you can even get pressure with the shading, like this. But then when you need it, you can come back and get in here and between 90 and 75 degrees and uh, you're all right you're you're you you can still have a nice uh, clean line out of the pencil without too much jitter um if you want an even sharper point what i've done is i'll go back and i'll show you something and you can even bring this principle into other brushes that you create but basically I've got the pressure set to a curve like this. It's a little bit of a linear curve, and it doesn't really ever reach 50% of a, uh, it doesn't really reach a value of 50%. It's, it's almost like 40%, between 35 and 40%. And um, what this 
does is it gives you a little bit of a, a, a decrease and increase in the thickness and sharpness of the brush because right here you see that I have no preset setting for the size variance. But when I apply force pressure, I get an entirely different set of line qualities. In case I want to draw some really sharp, really fine details. And I can even still shade at this point. We'll just draw something here. Some kind of a we're just gonna use some rocks. It's just easier, you know, I don't have to think too much about it. And you can get a really nice shade. So, yeah, I, I have been on this kind of a quest to find and uh, create better pencils. And uh, I know these, are, these may not be the best pencils out there, but I'm super proud of the work that I've been doing to uh, get these pencils in, in the shape that they're in now. Uh, the Ultimate Limnifier, I'm not just calling it that uh, to be cute or anything like that. Uh, I'm, I really... I mean, I enjoy drawing with these pencils, and I think they have a, a lot to offer. Yeah. So I've given you a variety of colors. We've got non-photo blue, and this is this is sort of something that is just a little bit of a novelty. It's not really super useful um, that I can tell right away. Uh, it's just a uh, you know, I used to, I thought it was so cool when I discovered the idea of non-photo blue like a long time ago when I sort of tried to sort of dip my toes into the, the analog comic artwork a long time ago when I was in high school. I just thought it was so cool that that, that was a technique that was used, you know, so I included it just, just for fun. We've got light blue. Oops, let me put this back on so you can see. We've got dark blue, green, red, graphite. And again, with all these pencils, if you just add a little pressure, you can get some nice variants in there, and you can do shading with all these pencils like so. Um, if you go in, you can take a closer look at the textures and nibs that I'm using, settings. You can, you know, I encourage you to play around with these a little bit because, you know, the great thing about Affinity Designer is that, you know, you can just delete the brush kit and then reinstall it when you want to have it back to your default settings. You don't have to go back and, you know, reset it. You can just delete what you've got or save the ones you want to save and then bring the old brush kit back in. So that's something to consider. And if you ever want to, you know, I've got it set to the way I like. To, to, what, to what looks right to me at 300, but it may not look right to you. So maybe you'll play around with that a little bit and, uh, you know, um, get it set to something a little bit different. The, the reason I'm showing you all this is because what I've also done is I've also included on the download, in the download section on Gumroad, I have included a, uh, uh, an Ultimate Limnifier uh, archive. So you can go in and uh, grab some of the older limnifiers and take some of these setting uh, settings into those old limnifiers and sort of, you know, uh, transform those pencils into something better. Um, maybe you you haven't considered uh, using uh, a tilt uh, input curve that looks like anything like this before. Maybe you haven't considered uh, using this technique here where you can uh, apply force pressure to sort of sharpen the pencil. Um, go back into that Limnifier Archive and, uh, you know, sort of tweak the settings a little bit. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. I've actually done it in my spare time, um, but um, it's, it's, it's more fun if you sort of leave it for others to discover rather than just showing everything. Um, I think that's part of the beauty of comic artwork in itself, right? It's, we're shown some things, but the rest is like sort of happening in our head and our imagination. The artwork just uh, fuels that imagination. So um, with the pencils, it's sort of a similar concept, like just take some of these setting ideas or settings ideas and go into those pencils and uh, try to transform them and see what you come up with. I think you'll really enjoy the results. Um, all right, so moving on. 
Um, oh yeah, we've got the color one too, which is basically like, you know, what you can do with these, uh, which is really cool, is you can layer up different colors and mix colors, right? And if you really want to, um, yeah, like this, like if you want to get some color pencil drawing going on inside Affinity Designer, here you go, right? Uh, that This is a lot of fun, and I have played with this a lot. I'm thinking about doing like a, a color pencil live stream where I'm, I'll, I'll try to do like a small little composed drawing, and I'll try to color it with color pencil only. I think that would be so fun and cool, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But yeah, you've got a color pencil here if you ever want to make use of it. And again... Uh, I, it's not really necessary because of the way that the nibs are. The nibs are uh, transparent. They're slightly transparent. So what happens is you get this sort of natural multiply effect. You don't really have to mess with the layer mode. But, you know, I encourage you to go in and experiment, you know. Uh, uh, um, play around with the blending mode a little bit and see what you can come up with. You might come up with something cooler than what I have uh, discovered thus far. Um the next pencil I'll talk a little bit about is uh, started off as a prototype um, uh, that I was playing around with, uh, and I really liked the result, and I decided to keep it because it it, it looked so familiar to me, uh, um, being so familiar with what uh, grease pencils look like, and uh, I I used them quite a bit when I was, uh, um, you know, just starting out. Uh, you know, learning about art materials and stuff. I really liked the uh, the thick, uh, sort of waxy, greasy line they create. Um, but it's it's very similar to the other luminifier. I've got the curve set, almost the same. It's got the same texture in there. Uh, and yeah, you, you can get. Uh, it, it's just very pleasant to draw with. You know, um, maybe I don't know what this is. <laughs> is this some kind of a I've been drawing these sort of mushroomy shapes lately, but yeah, uh, it's a subconscious thing, I think. Um, but they're there for you. If you want to uh, just quickly get some really dark lines going, uh, I'm, I'm trying to draw something like comic booky here, like maybe some some massive uh, like Captain America style forearm. Something like that. My anatomy is atrocious here, but we'll see. Elbow. Yeah, we won't go too far into that. I gotta slow down and think. I'm trying to keep the video like under 15 minutes, so cool. Yeah, add a little pressure, you can get a nice, deep, rich black. It's really great. So if you're doing some figure studies on your iPad and you want to uh, enjoy that, you can you can really have some fun with this guy. So I, I threw him into the, the updated kit. The last pencil that I'll talk about is my personal favorite. It's what I've been using the most these days. Uh, and that is the Limnifier 9.0. And it's the 9.0 because it is the most recent and the very last limnifier that I've made uh, up until this point. Um, and uh, basically, uh, I called it the Swordfish. Uh, yes, I definitely named it after Spike Spiegel's ship. Uh, and it's just uh, something about the line quality. Um, when you draw with it, it's got this... It's just this beautiful... The, the texture is really beautiful. And... Um, You'd be surprised to learn that the texture isn't even created by a texture image. It's the way that the brush nibs flip and tumble and fold. Um, I'm considering adding a couple more uh, nozzles uh, to the brush, uh, but we'll see. Um, right now, as it sits, there are only two, but I have a, a set of four that I created originally for this idea that I had. Uh, I spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to get the pencil texture without the texture image because the texture image actually can limit you at some point. Like, um, you know, it's uh, it, 
it's set in stone, so to speak. So you kind of are stuck with the paper texture or the texture. Whereas like if you get the nozzles to sort of be an active participant in creating the texture, you, you can manipulate it a little more easily. So that's where I was going with the swordfish here. And, uh, it's got a really naturalistic looking line when you draw with it. Uh, zoom out a little bit. The line is really clean. You can get these nice light lines. But you can also go super dark. And uh, yeah, it's just a lot of fun to draw with. And then really, it really shines when you hit that force pressure. You can get sharp, aggressive lines. And for the swordfish, the shading aspect of it is sort of um, the shading aspect of it is sort of toned down quite a bit. You can still shade with it, but you can still shade with it. But it's not um, it's not gonna it's not as pronounced as the other limnifiers are. Uh, and what I will tell you is you can still get that pronounced shading if you like. You can see it's, it's reduced quite a bit. Um, let's pump it up to something a little bit. Let's try 144. Well, that's a little bit of a bug. I don't know. Uh, these days um, in Affinity Designer, when you, when you try to type it in manually, it doesn't uh, come out the way you kind of want it to right away. Uh, it will always bump it up to four, 400. Uh, I don't know. That's some kind of a bug. I they haven't worked out yet. So yeah, um, now look at it. Much more. Uh, you get much more of a gradient there. So it's like like this. And again, I'm using an overhanded grip here. It's almost at like a like a 15 or 10 degree angle there. I forgot what the limit, the bottom limit of the Apple Pencil is. So yeah, guys, this is the Swordfish. It's, it's my personal favorite at the moment, um, just for my drawing style. I tend to go into this Mike Mignola type of hatching thing a lot lately. Um, and I guess that's just the easiest way for me to get my ideas out quickly. Uh, but you know that uh, the, the 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 pencil the graphite shading technique with the overhand grip sometimes it comes in handy a lot so uh, that's available to you uh, if you want to use it so yeah there you go guys the these are the limnifier pencils and uh, again uh, just check the download section of your quick hit vintage in your gumroad library you can uh, just get this I'm, from now on, when I update uh, a single kit, I'm just going to include it as a separate download. Uh, so that way, all of you guys can just go and grab just the brush file. You don't have to download the whole thing. Um, before I end this little part of the video, uh, I will just tell you a little bit about the, uh, the erasers. The penultimate nullifier, uh, basically, it's a uh, sort of a kneaded rubber eraser. You can go soft. Oops, sorry, let's uh, grab the eraser brush. You can go soft. If you don't apply too much pressure, you can sort of get in and do some very fine, easy adjustments. You can bump the size up a little bit so you can see it here like this. But if you press down on it, you can cover larger areas, almost as if you, uh, you know, were like sort of trying to clean up a drawing with some kneaded rubber. So you just make light presses. Heavier you press, the more it'll sort of suck up. And then you can also just go in like that. This basic round is just, just cutting right through, right? And then this guy right here, this is another eraser. This one is uh, meant for uh, when you ink. Uh, it can get really, it has a really, really fine point. So you can get right up to the edge without really damaging the line. And you don't have to worry. But if you press down, it's just like a basic round. So it's really useful. So those are your three erasers. All right. Guys, I'm going to 
end this section of the video. Uh, in the next section, I'm going to show you guys how you can get the most out of these pencils on your desktop. All right, guys. I'm here on my desktop in Mac OS Monterey. Uh, if everything looks grayed out, um, it's because I'm using the uh, monochromatic iconography. Uh, so don't worry, Optimus Prime didn't die. I'm just using the monochromatic iconography uh, settings in the preferences. I don't know why, but these days I much prefer some simple iconography. Um, so, all right. Um, let's take a look at what we've got going on over here. I've installed all my brushes from the Quick Kit Vintage. And again, uh, just to remind you guys that I uploaded the Legacy Kit, right? The original kit with the original halftones and the Limnifier Archive as a single uh, uh, file so that you can download all the old versions of the Limnifier. I know several people have said that they prefer the older versions for some reason. You know, everybody's got different reasons. Uh, but yeah, those are there for you so that you can access them really easily. They're just downloadable single files in your library. So you can grab those whenever you want. I've also updated recently to the... Uh, pen and ink version 3.3 you'll notice i have two versions here and that's what this little section of the video is about i'll try to cover it as quickly as possible um let's take a look at the kit here uh same kit that i was using on my ipad earlier i'm just going to grab a little brush here i guess i'll take the red and uh, i'll start drawing a little bit and talk a little bit about what's going on now uh just to put some notes on the screen here i am uh working on my x P Pen Deco Pro Medium. Okay. And uh, and uh, I'm on a Mac OS Monterey. So what I want to say is the first thing you need to remember is that uh, every tablet will be different. Okay, so let's check this out. I'm going to draw a little bit, show you some stuff. I'm trying to evoke the tilt right now. So when I'm drawing lines like this, my brush is between 90 degrees and, uh, you know, 75 degrees. Something about like this. But here, I'm holding the brush at a very steep uh, or or acute angle, I would say this is somewhere between, um, you know, 45 and 30 degrees. Or maybe, maybe, maybe between 60, 60 degrees and, and, and uh, 45 degrees, something like this. But nothing's happening. Okay, and that's because the tilt function is specifically designed for the Apple Pencil, I believe. Check this out. Oops, sorry. I. I got ahead of myself. I, I right before I started filming the video, I, I I guess I subconsciously switched it. Check this out. These are the default settings of the brush tilt, right? But this tilt input parameter is made for the Apple Pencil, right? Uh, so when I'm doing this right now, ninety degree, ninety degrees, and now I'm holding it at a much steeper angle. Not much is happening there. That's because I need to change this input to angle. Most tablet pens use the angle input, all right? So that's another thing. You use the angle input parameter, okay? Uh, that's going to that's going to put you in the right area. And then what I would do is to get a baseline. What you want to do is we're gonna we're gonna treat this like we would um like uh, police investigation, right, um, or, or, or interrogation. Um, I've been watching a lot of, like, crime programs lately. I don't know why. I'm just fascinated by the psychology of all of it. Um, uh, but, yeah, and my wife's into that kind of stuff, too, so we're all, we're all into that. Um, anyway, what you want to do is establish a baseline and then start to sort of probe and figure out where the, the that where's the sweet spot that you want to be in to get the results that you're looking for okay so let's check out what happens now 
Now I've got the angle. I've got the default uh, pressure curve in place. Let's see what happens. 90 degrees. Holy crap. I knew that was going to happen, but I just wanted you to be surprised. Yeah, this is what I was after with this angle earlier. But check this out. Now I'm holding the brush at this angle. This is bananas, right? You could use the brush this way and be happy, right? But you're going to have to alter the way you draw. Uh, for example, I'm going to draw like a, a little, uh, another little alien guy here, I suppose. Um, maybe he's, uh, he's unhappy because the pencil's not performing the way he wants it to. And, he, and he's, he's angry at Rob because he downloaded the brush and he can't figure it out and it's bothering him. And I don't blame him. It's frustrating. So that's why we're making these little videos. So here you could go in here with the 90 degree angle and get your shading going on and be quite happy with it, right? But if that's not the way you draw, you're not going to dig that. So check it out. Here's what I recommend doing. First, before you even do this, right? Before you even do this, go up to your brush kit, right? Go up here to the burger menu and then rename the category. And I would call it the desktop version, right? Then, as you can see here, I've already done this. But what I did was I went into my brush settings in the dynamics area for the scattering. And I started playing around with the settings. I've got the angle input selected. And what I've done here is I've found the curve that best suits my drawing style on this tablet. And it also sort of it compensates for the way that the tablet's input behaves because every tablet and every pen is different. The sensitivity is different. The scope, the ability of the pen is different on every tablet. So you're going to have to sort of experiment and probe and find that sweet spot. Now check it out. This is what I've got. And I, and I don't want to show you the, it, it's basically a very similar uh, curve for each of the uh, scattering uh, X and Y input uh, parameters. <laughs> Now, when I draw, we're back to normal, back to the way it was when it was on my iPad. I've got a 90 degree here. Oh, isn't that nice? I get a little bit of variation. This one was, uh, you know, this is about 75 to 60 degrees, right? But now watch. Ah, right. I'm back to that shading ability, just like I was on the iPad. We've, we've got that nice low uh, 45 to 30 degree angle. Guys, I'm not quite sure about the exactitude of these figures here. I'm just sort of giving you an estimate to sort of at least give you an idea about what's happening with my hand. Um, so, yeah. That's basically the end of the video, guys. Once you do this, once you find your sweet spot, just go into all your different brushes and re-input the settings. Yeah. And you'll be able to draw with the brushes just like you were on the iPad. Uh, and if you guys didn't have an iPad and if you're not using an iPad, this is what the this is what it would look like uh, once you get the settings appropriate. And 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 you know, you can go in here and you can change things and that's the great thing about brushes you can customize them to your liking uh and uh, that's why i didn't just in just include a desktop version of the brushes right off the bat because i knew that it's going to create a lot of problems for people and a lot of dissatisfaction um every tablet's different every pen is different so you guys are going to have to sort of experiment and play to get the results that you're looking for but the, the positive thing to remember is that I believe uh, that these pencils and these brush settings uh, are capable of giving you guys a really great pencil drawing experience that you can appreciate and enjoy. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying the pencils and I hope you find uh, the settings that will help you get the most out of the brushes. Guys, that's going to wrap up this little uh, section of the video. Thanks for joining me for the second video in the Quick Hit uh, Vintage Reloaded User Guide series. 
Thank you for being patient with me and for supporting me, all you new subscribers and you guys who have recently purchased the kit. Thank you so much. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope it's helping you uh, be inspired and stay active artistically. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope uh, you guys are making your uh, dreams come true and meeting your personal goals out there. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your friends and family. Keep working hard. Stay healthy. And we'll see you in the next video of the series where I talk a little bit about the ink brushes and how to use those. Cheers.